It's crazy to think we're on the verge of back to school season again, but it is upon us and we can all agree that the past two years have been crazy for students, faculty, and staff. So as kids are going back to school, I've partnered with Cricut to share my top 10 favorite Dollar Tree blanks right now that you could customize and send to school with your kids for back to school teacher gifts, holiday gifts, or teacher appreciation come the spring. So stay tuned. This is Whiskey and Wit. My name's Whitney, and on this channel, I love to share DIY and budget home decor, as well as Cricut projects and wood builds. So if you love all things DIY, be sure to hit subscribe down below so you don't miss a future Whiskey and Wit video. I come from a family of educators. My dad's a principal, my mom is a kindergarten teacher. Education and supporting teachers is incredibly huge to me. All the folks that I know pour their entire souls into their classrooms and into their students. With the crazy year that we've had, I wanted to share some really fun ways that you can send some personalized gifts to school that won't take you a ton of time or cost a lot of money, but will really make the teachers feel appreciated. Finn just turned one, so he's not even in preschool yet, so we're gonna make these for Finn to give to his grandma Carol, who's my mom, for her kindergarten classroom. So let's get crafting. So to keep it really simple, all the projects we're doing today will be with adhesive vinyl, and I'm gonna be using my new Cricut Maker 3, but you can make these on any Cricut machine. So the first project is this adorable little apple pencil holder, and it starts with this unfinished wood crafter square apple cutout. I started first by staining the entire piece with some stain. I chose Brighter Smoke by Verithane, and then I went through with some red acrylic paint once everything dried and painted the apple piece of both sides red. Then I just followed up with some green paint to create the little leaf. I decided to leave the stem just the stained color. And then to finish it off, I used my Cricut to create a cute little personalized decal. I'm cutting this on Smart Materials. That's how I'm able to do it without a mat. I did a full review on this machine, so I will link that video if you're interested in one of those new machines. We could absolutely cut this on a mat just with some regular white vinyl or really whatever color you want. And then after I weeded it to apply it to the apple, I took my transfer tape and stuck it to the table a few times. That's gonna get rid of the initial super stickiness. And I like that when I'm applying to wood or something that's painted like this apple. That way I have a lower chance of ripping off any wood or paint. Then I got my decal all lined up where I wanted it. And then I used my Cricut squeegee to push everything down and get it all set. Once the transfer tape was peeled off, it was ready to go. This is a super quick and easy gift, but with that personalization, it's really nice. It's also really functional because they could use it as decor, like so, in their classroom, or they could add pens, pencils, markers, highlighters, whatever they need in different areas of their room. If you have a teacher that's more into neutrals or you are making this for a male teacher, you could also just leave it stained instead of painting over the top if you wanted a more neutral vibe. I will link the fonts I used down below, so in case you wanna recreate this to look the same, that's where you could find all that info. Next up is this really cute teacher book stack that says teachers change the world and this is a Dollar Tree little crate. So I stained it first with Briar Smoke by Verithane stain and then I went through with just some chalk paint and dry brushed on some white chalk paint. This is where you just put a little bit of paint on your paintbrush and run it over the top of the stain so that as you can see here you can see the stain through but it's still more of a white color and I did that so my black vinyl would pop for the letters of the book. Now to figure out the size of my vinyl, I just went through and measured the box and I wanted to make sure that I had enough room on the right hand side of my box, left hand here, to tie some ribbon. So four inches looked good to me because it was a little over five inches for the whole box. So to create that, I went into design space, I added text, and then I went up and typed in typewriter. I used the font American Typewriter, so once everything's changed, then I typed in the text that I wanted. Then came sizing. So I went up to the top and figured out my longest line, which was change the, and I needed that to be the four inches. So then I figured out, okay, the font is about 46 point something. So then I changed all of the fonts to that same size. That's how I get everything to be about the same size, but fit within the width that I need. Then for this project, I just used some scrap vinyl. A lot of these projects are great scrap busters as well, which make them even cheaper. Pop that into my machine and cut out my little words for my books. Once it was all cut out, I went through with my weeding tool and I like to remove the insides of the words first, but it's totally personal preference. 
Then I did the same thing, stuck my transfer tape to the table, then stuck it onto my design, cut them out into the individual little pieces, and then put them on each line. Then I used the lines on the crate to help me center my text. My last step was to add some embellishments, so I added this red and white plaid ribbon that I had left over from Valentine's Day. I also used it on patriotic decor. My mom's school colors are red, white, and black, so I incorporated the red with the ribbon, and then I grabbed a red, black, and white crayon and glued them on to the top of the book stack with hot glue. You could put whatever saying you want on this. You could also personalize this with the teacher's name. You could do whatever crayon colors, ribbon colors. It's a nice little gift they could put on their desk. It's also really lightweight and it doesn't take up a lot of room. Recently at my Dollar Tree, I was able to find some of these really adorable glass mugs. And I thought this would be awesome for either a coffee or tea mug for a teacher or to corral some supplies. So I found a really cute crayon SVG for free on Kaluuya Design, so I will link that down below. And let me be totally transparent that while it did turn out really cute, this ended up being a decent amount of weeding and putting it all together. So you could absolutely do it. Here's how I did it. But if you don't want to mess with that, I would just do a simpler design or maybe just one color. Because it's an SVG, the Cricut machine will tell you what color to load and I just use scraps here again. Then I went through and added my crayons one by one. I had a couple pieces not want to stick or stick crooked. Once everything was stuck to the transfer tape as one big decal, I stuck it down to my cup. And I get a lot of questions about applying a decal that won't stick. I like to use my squeegee tool like I'm doing here and that will help hold everything down. So a little bit of a pain, but this thing is just so, so cute. But you could put whatever you want on it. You could go as simple as just the name like I did on the Apple pencil container, or you could go as crazy as this and do multiple colors. My mom is a big tea drinker. So if you're unsure of the preferences of the teacher, you can go with something generic like this. This would also be a great holder for a little Starbucks or Dunkin' or whatever coffee place is near you. Just even $10 goes a long way for them to feel appreciated. Sticking with the crayon motif, here is an easy way to get this crayon look from these Dollar Tree Crafter Square wood arrows. So I just took my miter box and trimmed off the two points of my arrows to create a pencil looking shape. And then to make it look like a crayon, I just got rid of the pointy tip. I sanded everything down and then stained them all fully. Then I painted one red, one blue, and one yellow so that I had the primary colors. You could do these again in a variety of colors. This is all just inspiration. So you can just do whatever you feel or whatever would fit your particular situation. So then I was able to create these crayons really easily and I'll show you how to do it too so you could customize with whatever words that you want. I found this clip art online that just said crayon and I imported it and cut out everything when I was importing except for the center circle circle because I wanted that to be an area where I could put text. Then once that was all set, I uploaded it as a cut image and put it on my canvas. Then I got my design the size that I wanted it for my signs and then I cut out the words. So to do that, I typed out welcome to kindergarten. I centered it over each of my pieces and then I selected the crayon squiggle, we can call that, plus welcome for this one. So I've got two things selected and I'm gonna go down to the right hand corner and hit slice. What it's gonna do is take that word welcome and cut it out of that circle. So then when you're cutting it on your machine, you'll be able to have that show through. So then instead of it being black, it would be red or blue or yellow. So that's how I created those and I cut them out and it's a very simple process and then you could put whatever text you want on your crayon. So it could say welcome to Mrs. Johnson's class or welcome to eighth grade or welcome to art class. You know, seriously, whatever you want. And then everything was really easy to cut out, weed, and then apply with my transfer tape. And because my squiggles were the width of my crayon, it was really easy to line it up and apply. I also put my red one next to my blue and yellow one as I was applying those decals so that I knew they would all line up. 
Then the last step was to assemble my sign. I knew I wanted them to hang about a couple inches apart, so I measured it all out, got everything where I wanted it, and then I took two pieces of just Dollar Tree jute twine and basically entombed them in hot glue. This is how I like to attach my signs, and it works well. You could also use a thin staple on the back, just make sure it doesn't go through the front. And then I did the same process with the hot glue to add a hanger at the top so that I could hang the entire sign. And here's the final product. I love how cute these crayons are. These would also be awesome to add to a wreath or anything like that. So really the sky's the limit. This one is another idea for classroom decor. It is this hanging pennant sign. You could absolutely use any Dollar Tree sign to do this, but I used one of my favorite pennant signs that I have a million of because I overbought. So if you have any glitter or anything on your Dollar Tree sign, then you're going to want to remove that with some sandpaper. And then I covered the entire thing with some black chalk paint. You don't have to have chalkboard paint. You could just use black, even acrylic paint. I just wanted a black base so it looked like a chalkboard. Then to really make it look like a chalkboard once it's dry, I just took a little bit of chalk and I rubbed it over the top of my painted sign and then I used my finger to just kind of smear it so it looked like a really well loved and used chalkboard so that it went with the sentiment on the decal that I'm going to put on the sign. Once everything was set for my chalk and it looking like it was erased, I glued my stained unfinished disc to the front of it. And then the last step was to add my decal with the wording. So this is another free one I will link over on my blog for you. And I just applied it with some transfer tape. I ended up sizing this to about seven inches wide. The actual piece is eight, but I wanted to make sure that I had space on either side. I really love the play on the eraser theme here. The back looks like an old school chalkboard. I really think this sentiment is perfect. There are so many teachers that have touched so many lives and this is a really great way to kick off the year. Continuing with that chalkboard theme, I had an idea for a sign and I am so excited about how this turned out. So this started with an 8x10 crafter square canvas and I removed the outside with a flathead screwdriver. We've done this a ton before when we've made reverse canvases, but here we're just interested in that outside frame. So I removed it with the flathead screwdriver and then pulled it out the rest of the way with some pliers. And then once I had the inside of the canvas, I sanded it down and then I used some antique wax from Waverly, which don't even get me started that Walmart is getting rid of it. I have not tried the new stuff. I'm kind of boycotting. Let me know if you have down below. I digress. But I covered this whole thing with that antique wax and then I wipe it off just as if I was staining. This dries a lot quicker, but it gives you the stained wood look, which I really like. So then I wanted to create a faux chalkboard. So I took some scrap foam board, also from Dollar Tree. I traced the frame onto it and then I cut it out with my little rotary cutter to try to get a straighter line, but I'm cutting like I'm in kindergarten right now. It is what it is. I finally got the hang of it and cut it down to the right size and then I painted it with some black chalk paint. If you're buying this already, just buy the black foam core and you'll be better off. But if you already have white foam core, I just wanted to use what I had. Once that dried, I just glued it onto the back of my frame and then I used my smart vinyl again to cut out the wording. And this is a free cut file. I found a Danelian font for free online and I absolutely love it. Every time I see that, I think of my mom. She taught fourth grade and now teaches kindergarten. And so I knew I wanted to put that in a design and this was it. Again, you can cut this on any vinyl. It doesn't have to be smart vinyl. You don't have to have the huge machine as well. You can just size it to whatever sign you're doing. Then I applied my transfer tape. I trimmed out any of the excess just so I had less of a chance of anything pulling up that paint, but it really applied really beautifully. And then my last step, just for a little bit of effect, I added two broken pieces of chalk to the corner with hot glue. So it really looked like you wrote that message on there in chalk. And also using foam core and a little canvas I have not done before. I have not seen it done before. I'm sure I'm not the first one, but I'm really excited about all the possibilities this opens for seasonal crafting come fall and Christmas. This next one is super duper easy. You could throw this together literally the night before and it would be great. I grabbed one of these little Dollar Tree signs. You could use any of their galvanized metal or chalkboard signs or just honestly anything to put this decal on. 
I cut it out on some white matte vinyl and weeded everything out. Even though there's a little bit of small letters in here, it wasn't too bad. I cut it out on white matte smart vinyl, but you could use honestly any vinyl that you have in any color. You could do all of the different words in this different colors, but I just decided to keep it just the one color white. Then I weeded it, added some transfer tape, and applied it to my little sign. I left just enough room at the top when I sized it so that I could add a little embellishment in a minute. This could apply to the students in the classroom as well as the teacher if they are having a rough day. It says, in case no one has told you, hello, good morning, you belong here, you're doing great, and I believe in you. We could all use a little bit more of that in our lives. So I just ended up finishing off with a cute little crayon. I just put a gray one so it wouldn't take away from the message, but this one is so sweet. The size and the fact that it's really lightweight would be perfect for a desk or a little table in a classroom. And this is a great reminder of the good work that both the students are doing as well as the teacher. I'm so excited to share this wreath with you because it can be made with under $10 of Dollar Tree supplies as well as some scrap vinyl. So I started with this pool noodle and created a wreath form. So Shannon over at the Daily DIYer shared this in her pool noodle hack video we did for Christmas in July and it actually helped out a ton because I went to the store and couldn't find a wreath form that I wanted and honestly I would recommend going this route anyway because it was a great area to glue on the crayons. So I ended up grabbing five packs of crayons from Dollar Tree to use for this project and if you grab them when they're on sale at Walmart for like two for a dollar you can make this wreath for even cheaper so you can get it for under like seven bucks. So the first thing I did was went through all of my boxes of crayons and sorted Roy G. Biv, you can tell I'm a <laughs> teacher's kid, across all of the different colors so that I knew what I had because I wanted to do it in a rainbow pattern. Then I went through and within each color sorted them by the subcolor. Within the reds and the pinks, I made sure all of these specific kinds of pinks were together and I did that through everything so I could glue them in a section. So then it was time to glue them on, so I just put on a ton of hot glue on top of that duct tape and I glued down my crayons. Now my first two chunks were too close and they didn't really make a circle, so I peeled them off and fixed them. I just wanted a little bit of white peeping through and that's why it was great that I added the duct tape around the entire wreath because it really helped the hot glue to stick. Then I just went through and added hot glue and then did five of the crayons and the next five colors, next five colors, etc., to create my rainbow crayon wreath. So to make the pencil, I used one of these arrows from the crafter square section and I followed the same process that I did to make my crayons earlier. I just popped off the staples on the back to get rid of the hanger and then I cut off the two sides to create a pencil shape. I just used my miter box. If you have a saw to chop it off, you could probably also use a box cutter just to get enough of a perforation that you could pop it off and then sand it. Now what I would have done here is not stained it. I ended up staining it because I like the look of stain under acrylic paint, but for the sake of it, I wish I would have left it for this pencil. So I had to go through with some ivory paint just to create the lighter color of the pencil. So if you didn't stain it, you wouldn't have to do that. So personal preference. Then I did the middle chunk of my pencil, the yellow color from Waverly, it's called Maze, but you could use whatever pencil yellow you have. I painted the section and then to create the tip, I just went through with an angled brush and made those little zigzags that you see when you sharpen your pencil. I added a black tip with some black paint and then to do the eraser, I covered that whole remaining area with pink and then I went over the top with some gray to create the little metal holder for the eraser. Once that was all done, I used that Denelian font that I used from the chalkboard before and put it on to my pencil. I measured so that it would overlap a little bit into the eraser as well as into the wood part of the pencil. And I just used some black matte vinyl to cut out my mom's name so that it was personalized when she hangs it on the door of her classroom. 
and I added my transfer tape, did my little trick where I put it on the table. I do that every time with my Cricut transfer tape and it seems to help. It is very, very sticky, which is awesome, but also when you're putting it on paint like this, you don't want it to be too sticky, so that's why I do that. Then to create the other section of the wreath, the two little apples, I took one of those apple containers from before and popped off two pieces. I sanded down the back, stained them as well, and painted them with red and green, just like I did the little pencil holders that we talked about at the beginning. I did a brighter green so it would pop. Once those were all dry, I added a decal onto the red one that said, Welcome to Kindergarten. Then it was time to apply to the sign, so I just did hot glue to the pencil, hot glue to the red apple, to the green apple, then to the wreath. Attach some jute twine to the top to hang it. The wreath isn't very heavy, and I like that you're able to kind of wiggle that in between. And then here's the one piece that's not Dollar Tree, but you could do it with Dollar Tree burlap. This is Hobby Lobby burlap, and I liked the big bow. So to create this, I just looped around the burlap just like you would for any type of awareness ribbon and then I pinched the center to create a bow. I wrapped some jute twine around the center and you have a really cute wreath bow. I glued it to the wreath and then I also added a little collection of some primary colors of crayons just because the bow looked a little meh with all the other colors and that really helped spice it up. My last step was to cut the center of my little tails so that they looked a little more finished. And oh my gosh, I love this thing. It turned out so good. It was a really great accident that I ended up not being able to find a wreath form because this one with the pool noodle was awesome. I also really love the different elements with the Dollar Tree shapes and you would never guess that this was all made from Dollar Tree items. Like I said, under 10 bucks, so stinking cute. Can't wait to get it into her room. I saw some of these pillar candles sitting at my Dollar Tree and the second I saw them, I thought those would make really cute crayons. So I removed the outside of the candles and on the last one, I kept the wrapper to the side so I could measure what it, I would need to wrap around the candle. So seven inches is what I decided I needed. So I went through with some Goo Gone before I did anything and wiped off the sticky piece of the wrapper. There's just a, like a line of sticky on these candles when you take it off and you just gotta get rid of that. I had to do a little bit of messing with the file that I used for my wood crayons to get the look I was going for. So the first thing I did was add my design and get it to the size that I wanted. Then I created a rectangle and put it over the top of the word crayon because I wanted to separate it from the squiggle line. Once I did that, I was able to make my squiggle lines seven inches wide without distorting and stretching the word crayon. Once that was complete, I ended up taking the word crayon and centering it with the squiggles so the crayon was the right size and the squiggles were gonna be the seven inches. Then to cut it, I just said that I wanted four copies of it in my cut screen and went ahead and cut that out. Went through and weeded it out and then applied it to my little faux crayon candles. I laid out each of my pillar candles so that I could make sure that the word crayon was going to be centered because I knew I wanted to display them all together. And because it's a pretty even curve around the outside, the squiggles were easy to apply. I aligned the bottom with the bottom of the glass and the top with the top of the wax. Then to finish them off, because I thought the top looked a little blah above the squiggle, I added a little bit of jute twine to finish off that look. These would be so fun for like an art teacher or an elementary teacher. They could display them in their classroom or take them home. There's a lot of different options, but I thought this turned out super cute. And for our final project, let's bring it all together for this cute little tub with a wood tag so everything can be wrapped up and sent to school. So this is just a Dollar Tree little plastic container with some more of that red plaid ribbon that I had, but you could use jute twine. You could use a variety of different things. I ended up taking that ribbon and wrapping it around 
kind of in and out weaving it throughout the holes of the basket to kind of dress that up a little bit and then I used some jute twine to tie on this little tag to make it all I did was stain one of Dollar Tree's wood tags and then added a decal on either side one is my mom's name the other side says hip hip array it's the first day and this is a free cut file for you over on my blog then once that was all ready, I added some white tissue paper, and then you can start loading up any of the items that you created. You could also do a sign and a really nice card. It doesn't have to be a ton, ton of things. Really, the theme here is just appreciation. So really, as much as teachers would love you to give them a $100 gift card, you don't have to do that. A lot of them would be really touched with a card, at least the ones that I know. So putting something like this together to kick off the new school year, especially when they probably have a decent amount of apprehension, given what is going on in the world still, this is just a really nice gesture. Also, when I'm packing things like the cup, I like to stick some tissue paper in it so when they look down at the gift, they can see what it says right away. Thanks so much for watching and let me know your favorite project down in the comments. Also, make sure you're subscribed because I am doing a full classroom makeover for my mom. I am so excited. It's gonna be a surprise, so she's gonna let me in there. I'm gonna do my thing. It'll be a huge thank you to her before the 2021 school year starts. A huge thank you to Cricut again for partnering with me on today's video. And if you are a teacher, a huge thank you to you for all that you do year in and year out. I know sometimes it can be a thankless job, but you are appreciated. So please know that. Thanks again for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.